Hi guys, this is Jake at Canadian Cutting Edge. And today I've got a little bit of a talk that I need to do with you guys. Uh, you've heard something about it, I'm sure, my fellow Canadians anyways. And uh, this video is to inspire you to action, to uh, do something about this problem that's happening. We've long had a problem with CBSA, Canada Border Services Agency, telling us what we can and cannot import in terms of knives. And it's been contrary contrary against the law sometimes. Uh, the Criminal Code of Canada has a very specific, small, little criteria of what kind of knives are illegal in Canada, and it's a very short list, to be honest with you. And CBSA, uh, teaming up with uh, CITT, the Canadian International Trade Tribunal, I think, well, I'll put it on the screen exactly what their acronym is for, has been stretching that a law so far so that now in 2018, in January, they've completely broken it and they are contrary to what the law actually says. They're stopping knives that are clearly not considered illegal by the Canadian government and by the criminal code. They are usurping the role of our government. And that's why we should be upset. That's why people that are not knife guys and gals should be upset. CBSA is assuming the role of government, and only our government can legislate. They are breaking democracy. They are contravening our whole way of doing government. And that's why we need to be angry, and we need to be clearly and explicitly uh, protesting against this. Not so much about the specifics of which knives we love and we can't import or uh should not be importing according to CBSA, but because they are taking over our government roles in, you know, not completely, of course, they're not taking over the government, but the little bit that they can is a first step. And then there's going to be another step. What's, what's going to be next? Who knows? They're going to take over something else that uh, they're going to say it's illegal to bring into Canada, something that's totally unrelated to knives, and it's going to upset another group. And it's just going to get worse and worse. We need to nip this now. So let me clearly talk about the specifics that brought this on. Uh, Customs Notice 18-01 just came out in January, and they've reworded it on January 10th already. And basically, the phrase that really gets us is that uh, folding knives that are going to be illegal are those that require or... Well, those that you can open using, quotes, some preliminary or simultaneous minimal manipulation, close the quote, to make them open. That is so subjective. What is minimal? What might be minimal to, you know, this guy that's six foot five and bench presses 350 pounds, you know, what might be minimal to him is different than what's minimal to me. We, it's, it's too subjective for one. Plus, it just can't work. That means any knife that I can, and it's any part of the knife blade. So it's a thumb stud or a flipper tab or a hole like a, the sweater co does. If there's something non-cutting edge that you touch that you start to move and then flip your wrist and then the knife opens, all of a sudden now it can be illegal as long as the CBSA agent says, oh, it was a minimal effort that I inputted. And bam, boom, bang, your knife is gone. So first, uh, I'm going to go through a list of things that I want to mention. First, I'm encouraging you, do not change your shopping habits. Please, don't change your shopping habits. It's going to only hurt fellow knife lovers if you change your shopping habits. Uh, I've been buying knives for a long time, and I've been buying them in large quantities since 2015, uh, getting ready to start this channel. In 2016, I had 14 knives confiscated by CBSA. And some of you are going, oh, yeah, that's a lot of knives. That's a little more than one a month. But I'm buying knives every week. And it's usually budget knives. Very often they're under $10. Uh, almost always they were under $20. It's the odd time uh, recently that I've been getting some more expensive knives. But just low budget knives that are good quality. And I can't tell beforehand or not when I get them if they're going to be able to be open centrifugally or not. Um, but I buy knives that I am totally convinced do not contravene the Canadian 
criminal code. And so I buy those knives and then they go through CBSA. Well, in 2017, two knives were confiscated. Those guys at CBSA are so busy, they cannot stop us from buying knives that we want to buy. And I'm saying legal knives, knives that don't contravene the criminal code. That's what I buy, and I'm sure that's what you order as well. And so if we keep on buying the knives that we want, most of them will keep on coming in. And I encourage you to keep buying foreign knives. Now, I'm before I get too much ahead of myself there, please keep watching, even if you're not a knife guy, because we're going to talk about in just a minute or two on what we can do to address the situation, uh, to take the authority back away from CBSA and put it back where it belongs, and that is onto our elected officials in Parliament. They are our lawmakers. They deserve that authority. We've elected them for that. And as much as we dislike our politicians sometimes, that's their job. And that's what they're hired to do. CBSA does not have that authority. Okay, so about knife shopping. Keep buying your knives. Be careful, though. Um, we get a lot of drugs into Canada, a lot of, uh, you know, fake fentanyl or fentanyl that's been cut and stuff. All kinds of other drugs come in through China and some other countries. I encourage you when you buy knives, don't buy them if they're going to be shipped from China. Uh, see, uh, gear best. You can you buy knives. If you take the totally non-tracking, cheapest way of shipping them, they're going to come from China. But spend a dollar or two or three sometimes on shipping and get it shipped through. Right now they've got choices of Belgium and Sweden most of the times for knives, at least here in Canada. So I always get my knives shipped either through Belgium or Sweden. I really wish they put the UK back on there again. That was, they came much faster then. And CBSA never stopped a, a uh, knife that I bought that came through um, the UK. They inspected a few and they let them come in. Amazing. That's the only time I've had knives that were actually inspected and still allowed in was when they came through the UK warehouse. So that's another thing to do. Petition your best to open up that warehouse in the UK for knives again. They still use that warehouse, just not for knives. We need to get them to change their mind. So one, get angry, but don't live in fear. Don't stop your change. Don't change your shopping habits. Um, consider when you're shopping that don't buy from vendors that are going to ship from China. So that means you have to be really careful on things like AliExpress and some of those places because they always ship through China. Next issue. The main issue that I'm complaining about, I reiterate, is CBSA and CITT are taking over the role of that our government has, and they should not be allowed to do that. That's what we should be upset about. That's what we should be encouraging our friends and neighbors, uh, family, to be getting upset about as well. So even if they're not into knives like you are, let them know this part. This is the part that you're supposed to be focusing on when you talk to them, that CBSA is taking over the role that they don't have. And that's what they should get upset about as well. So I'm saying write to your MP. Below the video in the description area, I'm going to have the uh, list where it's easy for you to find your MP. Uh, the government posts it and it's easy to, you know, you find where you live and you can write to your MP. They have a link directly to their email. But I encourage you to write by hand. Your MP has to accept letters to them, to their parliament office in Ottawa with no stamp. You don't have to spend a stamp at all. All you have to do is write it and close it up and put their address on it. And the government and Canada Post will mail it to them. Handwritten letters make at least 10 times, probably 100 times the difference than email does these days. Email is so easy that they ignore them. Write a letter by hand. Uh, type it out. Type it on your computer, but make sure you sign it in pen. Best yet is if you write it by your own hand then they listen, at least to some degree. And they listen much more than to emails. Write to the Prime Minister's office as well. Write to the Minister of Justice as well. You know, these people should be concerned what CBSA is doing. Uh, next, contact your family and friends. Get them involved. And I've already mentioned that. Tell them the same stuff. And so I'm going to have a sample letter below and uh, some, that I wrote. I'm not exact words. Uh, change it up a little bit, make it your very own letter and write in and complain. 
Finally, I hope we can find somebody, uh, maybe somebody who's a lawyer, especially if they're involved in federal stuff. If we can find somebody who will work with us at no charge, uh, we need to get organized. Uh, and I can't do this with my chronic pain and stuff. I can't organize a group, but we need to have, uh, you know, something like the knife rights people that we have in the United States. Our brothers and sisters down in the U.S., they are organized. They're changing their knife laws to be uh, more open and more fair uh, in many, many states. Uh, we need to organize something in Canada so that we can get that going here as well. Hopefully somebody can get us started on that. And uh, one side note, I encourage you to write in to CBSA about their practice relating to what you can do after they stop a knife from coming in. It's a very onerous method that you can get your knife shipped to some other country. That's your only real option. They give you the option of appealing. Don't do it. <laughs> because if you lose your appeal, and you will, then they take your knife away. So don't appeal. Uh, if you give them 90 days, then they'll just take the knife and it's gone. You can't, you do have the option of getting your knife shipped to another country, but they make it very difficult. Uh, they make it that you have to ship it as a dangerous good and you have to find a courier that'll accept dangerous goods and ship them out. You know, we can ship knives to each other in Canada, no problem. And there's no dangerous goods label that we have to put on stuff. And that's a knife staying in Canada in the mail. You know, we need to petition CBSA and we need to do it as nicely as we can to make it easier for us to have knives that are confiscated or stopped to be mailed back either to the retailer or somewhere out of Canada. Uh, for instance, I buy a $25 knife. It's going to cost me $50 to $75 to get it mailed just to the United States somewhere. It's That's crazy. They need to make it easy for us to mail those knives or have them mailed over to the U.S. to back to the vendor or something to return them to get our money back. What, especially if the knife is worth, say, $75, $80. Now, all of a sudden, you've doubled the cost of the knife. And there's a lot of knives in that category that are really, really nice. How do we know ahead of time if a knife is going to fail that test or not? How do we know if minimal force is needed or if it's minimal plus one, you know, calorie of force? That's going to take. We have no way of knowing which knife they're going to take. So they need to make it easier for us to return that knife back. And they need to hear us on that. That's another way that we can respond to this problem. And don't make that your primary one, but do this as well. Contact CBSA and tell them that we need a better system for returning knives that they, that they stop. So let's do that as well. And I'll have a sample of that kind of letter below in the description area. So that's my my note to you today, my, my talk. Uh, I'm probably going to think of something else afterwards. Uh, maybe I'll add another video. I don't know. It all depends. Please go and watch Kevin Cleary's video on this subject. He's got a very good video. His video does a much better explanation of the specific knife-related stuff for us. He goes through why knife crime is not a problem in Canada, and it isn't really a problem in Canada. He goes how, you know, almost all knife crime is with kitchen knives and not with folding knives anyways. And how, you know, a fixed blade is much faster to pull out and do a crime with than a folding knife anyways. Or, you know, something with an Emerson Wave that deploys even faster than any other folding knife. And yet, you know, an Emerson Wave has been legal for a long time. You know, so it, there's no logic to why they're stopping these knives. So we can focus on that, especially watch Kevin Cleary's video for that. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm sorry to be a bearer of bad news. Most of you have heard this already. I won't be able to respond to every comment in the comments below, I'm suspecting, uh, because a lot of you guys are going to be in a big huff. Vent. Go ahead. Use my wall to get angry. <laughs> and when you write into the government, really rein in your anger and use the logical arguments, use the arguments about CBSA taking over the roles that government only has and be very rational and concise and using clean language. Don't tick them off and then they will actually listen to us. I hope. Thanks for watching guys. Remember, always cut towards your chum, that is your buddy pal neighbor and not your thumb.
Bye now.